Hey, Mike Rosso here. We're in the uh, photo lab. We got our pals Tom, Chris, and Matt, and today we're going to be developing film. So right over here, we have our uh, our Patterson tanks. So what we're going to do is we're going to load our 120 film. Uh, these guys have some 120. I got two rolls of 120. Got 30, all these 35 millimeter reels. Twist, widen, and twist back. And then we're going to load it onto the spindle into here. On like this in the dark. I've got Dan doing that with some 35, and then we're gonna process everything. We got some D76, D76 stock that we're developing in. Uh, we have times right there. It's, it's pretty much foolproof here in the dark room. So we're gonna start off by developing, and then we're gonna hang everything to dry. And while everything's hanging to dry, I'm gonna take them in in here into the uh, the private lab where we have the 8x10 enlarger Ooh. and the Bessler 45 MCRX which is a 35, 120, and 4x5 enlarger, which is just, it's, it's my go-to for a lot of stuff. And we're gonna show them how to print on here while everything's drying, and then by that time, they'll know how to print, and they'll be able to print the eggs that they just processed. That's what it's all about. Now, Matt mentioned Patterson Tank, and I know what you might be thinking, because I was thinking it. You hear, you think Patterson Tank, and you wonder, what is it exactly? And it really is just tank. It's just a tank, so basically what you need when you get your tank, any kind of tank, you need something to hold your chemistry and hold your film. So right. This basically, you would feed your film through in the dark and do like... Yeah, you hold your feeders and you ratchet one end and that automatically feeds Feed your, your film, film in. all the way through the reel, and which is great for in the dark. Then you can close up the tank, and then, you, and then you can work in the light, correct? Exactly. You set it on your spindle right here. You insert your spindle into the bottom. There's this three little prongs there that hold your spindle oh. so it can't jostle around too much. You take your top, and the top is what allows chemistry to flow through there while keeping... See, there's a couple barriers here. Those are preventing light from getting in. Click it. Whoa. Click Whoa. it. So now, now it's light tight. Now it's... Super light tight. Ready to go. Great, Great process. That's it. We had D76 yeah. on hand, okay. and we were using it stock. And you can find those those formulas pretty much everywhere. Kodak has a data sheet for D76. When you mix up D76, there's a uh, a stock solution. Yeah. And you just kind of you once mix that's mixed. you mix an envelope uh, of powder with a set volume of water, and once you're done mixing. That's your stock. Pour in the developer, you know, uh, turn it upside down. Agitate whatnot. it. Agitate it. We're here in the dark room in the University of Finley's private student lab. I'm here in broad daylight. You should be doing this in the darkness but in broad daylight showing you what to do after you've shot your film. Here we have some old, old expired um, double X pan film. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in trays today. We're gonna do everything emulsion side up so we just keep things nice and neat. You fan out all the sheets. Try not to touch you know, much of the image surface, but if you have a pair of gloves, I always recommend using gloves in the dark room. And you start your timer for two minutes. So I have two minutes here and I'm putting my film. Just a nice little touch there. Next one, nice little touch. To agitate them around, I'm going to pick up the stack, pick up one sheet, slap it on across the top of the water surface, pan it out, pick up the sheet, drop it on the stack. And you repeat this uh, six times for your processing. And once your pre-bath is done, you have your developer, you're going to do the same kind of thing, agitating for the first 30 seconds to a minute, depending on what kind of developer you're using. And you're gonna, this is your, method, your main method of agitation. So that's, uh, that's the essentials of tray processing. When we, want to, uh, when we want to drum process something, it's a little bit different, um, a little bit easier for some, in complete darkness with a dry sheet of film. I'm using a wet sheet here. But pretty much the same thing. In complete darkness, we have our baffles here. We would curl the film, emulsion side in, load it into our drum. There's all these different ribs usually. Find some ridges, stick it in, it's all the way touching the bottom. There's no way it's going to come out of there. We take our lid in complete darkness. Now sometimes these lids have a little notch right here, fits right there. It's a little hard to do in the darkness sometimes. You kind of put your, put your finger over it, push it down, and now it's light tight. We would empty water into it, 
and wash it around. And usually you can use a tub that's a little bigger than that, roll it around in there, or we can use our handy dandy agitator base. We turn it on, and we take our drum, and it's doing all the work for us over a two minute period and then however long your developing period is. That's the essentials of drum processing and tray processing your film. Fantastic. And of course, if you're working in a traditional dark room at a university or a college or somewhere in a school facility, most likely they'll have a room with enlargers so you can do traditional printing, which you guys did. Yeah. I saw well, a, a Dan on your lap. You have some, some prints. Yeah. These are prints you made? Uh -huh. Yeah, these are prints these I are made. These are not digital scans. No. Yeah. No. They're there's... not printed out on like a no. HP or like an Epson printer. These images have never touched a computer. Wow. Think about that. No, no scanning or anything. Oh, I like there. that one. Yeah, this is uh, our friends Tom and Chris. Yeah. Uh, from oh, a media that? Format. They're our friends. Yeah. Wow, you guys are my friends now. <laughs> so if things go bad, I may, like, I may have to like, crash on your floor just, for a few just days. Just show up in Buffalo for a couple weeks. Yeah. Or you go. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, but yeah, 